It was in some book, East of Eden maybe, where the main character describes some guy he meets as looking like a flighty bantamweight. When I read that, I thought, what's a bantamweight? So I looked it up. A boxer or other competitor weighing from 112 to 118 pounds. My first thought, why is that weight category so unnecessarily specific? My second, how could this main character tell? Was he intimately familiar with the average height and build of every single official boxing weight class? Do you have a scale? I can understand being able to tell that someone is in the general weight range of over 200 pounds, but between 112 and 118? Plot contrivance. Boxing is a sport that involves beating another person until you physically knock them unconscious or damage them so badly that they're rendered immobile. Modern society accepts this. To spare some gore, however, the barbaric sport has an established weight class system, so boxers can only fight someone their own size, as it were. This ensures that a 5'2", 100-pound average Joe does not have to fend off a 6'4", 250-pound seething pile of muscle, making fights something close to fair. The weight class system has been in effect since the dawn of boxing, and it makes sense to an extent. The thing that bothers me is the disparity between the sizes of each class. There are eight main weight classes, as designated by the World Boxing Association, and ten in-between divisions, giving us 18 classes in total. Look at the lower weight categories, though. Featherweight is anyone from 123 to 126 pounds. So if dude A weighs 123 pounds, and dude B weighs 3 pounds more than him, and dude B wears slightly heavier clothes that day, or dude A comes naked, it's no longer a fair fight. My friend who's in wrestling complained to me once about how people only seem to care about heavyweight matches, as if none of the other weight classes matter. I'd say that opinion is completely valid, because heavyweight is the only one whose fighters don't switch weight classes if they drink a bottle of water before the match. I'll come back to heavyweight in a second. The tiny class ranges alone are ridiculous enough, but look at the heavier categories. You would think they would at least keep this standard of uncomfortably small 3-4 to four pound weight ranges consistent as you get heavier, but no, as you go up, the categories get bigger. You might think, oh, it's scalar, the weight ranges get bigger because they're all a certain percentage of their minimum weight. It's a basic squared cube law, DM. Wrong. Bantamweight's range, 3 pounds, is 2.6% of its minimum weight, 115. Cruiserweight's percentage, 14.3. I rest my case. And there are other problems, too. Cruiserweight is the second highest weight class. The highest? Heavyweight? Guess what the range is? Heavyweights weigh in between 200 and infinity pounds. This means that if you somehow crack the genetic code and create a horrifying superboxer that's 10 feet tall and could kill a man with a single blow to the shin, it's totally within the rulebook for him to fight old Glass Joe over here. This also means that the stars of my 600-pound life are eligible to compete and therefore can win by default due to their opponents being physically incapable of knocking them over. Of course, this hasn't happened yet. No huge blobs have started dominating the ring, and no superhuman androids exist. Yet. But a couple of dudes, one in particular, have used this all-encompassing rule system to their advantage. This is Nikolai Valuev. Don't mind the second head, I'm not sure why he has that in this photo. Look at this hulking brute. This man stood at 7 feet tall and 324 pounds of pure force. His boxing career had a final score of 50 wins and only 2 losses. Half the people he fought were reported as leaving the ring with tears streaming down their faces, and another quarter saw visions of him at night for the rest of their lives. He left boxing under mysterious circumstances and likely could have gone on to eradicate every other heavyweight. The story is he had some sort of bone issue. This is Russia we're talking about, though. My theory is that the KGB assassinated Valuev because they knew he was so powerful that he could just walk up to Putin, punch him once, and wrest total control from his smoldering remains. Actually, Valuev is pretty much the only guy to be successful at his weight. Andre the Giant won a WWE Heavyweight Championship once, but that organization is a stupid joke that no one should look to for serious information. So if there were a 300 plus pound weight class, the, he'd be the only one fighting, and as such would win by default. So that idea is out the window. What's the solution, you might ask, if it doesn't work to keep it and it doesn't work to fix it? Just d d don't have boxing anymore. Simple as, simple as that.